Hey guys, Courtney here with Courtney's Customs and today I really just wanted to make a video for anybody who has just started making tumblers or if you're thinking about making tumblers and you just don't really know how to start or what all to get. So I am making a video about the list of items that you're going to need. Some of them are like absolutely necessary and then others are just some supplies if you're wanting to make some more like advanced looks. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and give you every single item that I have here in my shed that I use to create my tumblers. So I have everything written down here in my little notepad because it's a lot. Um, there are a lot of supplies that go into this and you know that's why it's really important to think about whenever you start selling them think about all of the materials that you use you know your time that you put into it um, if you have like you know a building like I do like a separate building um, which you should because you shouldn't have epoxy in your home but um, if you have a separate building like this you know you got to pay for the building itself you got to pay for the electric you got to pay for the the heaters that you put in here the air conditioners because you have to have it a certain temperature like it's a lot but I promise it's going to sound super overwhelming at first but I, I promise it's really really easy to kind of catch on to everything and it, it'll be a lot easier the more you get into it so the first thing that you need obviously are tumblers and you want them to be stainless steel um, you know double wall vacuum insulated you don't want to put epoxy on plastic so like I've seen these really super cute water bottles at Walmart in the summertime and they're like they're pretty tall and they're plastic and they're kind of like different colors um, and they were like 50 cents and I remember when I first started I saw that and I grabbed like a hundred of them and I was like mm, I'm gonna use all these and it's gonna be amazing and then I learned that you cannot put epoxy on plastic because the um, chemicals I guess from the epoxy can leak through that plastic and even if the epoxy is completely cured you know you don't want the chemicals to leak through because that can be toxic so you really want to get some stainless steel tumblers and this one I have prepped ready for a water slide decal which I'll talk about later um, but I get all of my tumblers whether they are the 20 ounces or the 30 ounce skinnies or the wine tumblers I get everything from maker flow crafts and I'll make sure to put every single link to an item that I talk about down in my description whether it's from Amazon or a big company um, like whether it's from Amazon or you know different supply companies that I go through um, everything will be down in my description so I get all of my tumblers from maker flow crafts and I have chose them because one I really really like their customer service and everything that I order gets here really quickly um, all of their tumblers I buy them by the case that's another thing you can order them by the case of 25 which in the long run saves you money and especially if you know your business is growing and you produce a lot more tumblers at a time and then you want to order by the case but you can order them in singles and um, they all come individually boxed even if you buy them in a case and they come with the cup um, the lid the straw and a little care card that you can keep inside of your tumblers when you give them to your customer and it tells them you know like this tumbler is not dishwasher safe avoid extreme heat extreme cold do not microwave it you know hand wash only and it pretty much just gives them like a little warning like this is how you take care of it um, and all that good stuff I really like maker flow crafts and another thing about them is that their prices are a lot lower than all of the other companies that I have looked at or tried before in the past and if for some reason maker flow crafts is sold out of the tumbler that I'm needing I will go to the stainless steel depot.com and they're a little more expensive but their tumblers are just as great and they have really amazing customer service as well um, they're just a little bit more expensive and then the next thing that you're going to need for the epoxy tumblers is epoxy so when I first started I got all of my supplies either at the dollar store or on Amazon um, I went to my local Dollar General and I bought a little five dollar stainless steel tumbler and I would practice on it and then once I got better I would start ordering from these bigger companies that are solely for um, stainless steel tumblers but for the epoxy when I first started I would go to Amazon and I would buy the amazing clear cast and I thought at the time it was a really good deal because it was like 20 bucks and then sometimes it would be on sale for you know 14 or 15 and it was two eight ounce 
bottles and you know you have your part A and your part B. I'm not going to really go into um, how epoxy works that much. I will have a link up here somewhere around here um, to a video that I did about epoxy for beginners. But you will need epoxy and that's the clear hard coat that goes around your tumbler to pretty much make all of your designs permanent. And epoxy is a very toxic chemical once part A and part B are mixed. Um, a lot of epoxies will say that you know they're non-toxic or there's no VOCs or any of these bad chemicals. Um, and I'm not trying to put any epoxy companies down, but I'm just saying that I'm pretty sure that all epoxies are toxic once the part A and part B are mixed and it's not cured yet. So if you try your epoxy and you have an allergic reaction or you can't find one that, you know, doesn't have a really strong smell or something like that, you can use a product called Crystallac. Crystallac is an epoxy free product that you can use in place of epoxy. And there's no part A or part B, um, there's no mixing involved, you just pour it on your tumbler. Um, I personally have tried Crystallac and I just prefer epoxy, but I mean that's just me. Crystallac is wonderful, um, the creators of Crystallac are wonderful, but I just myself prefer epoxy. And the epoxy that I use now that I am more into my tumblers and I've tried different brands, I use KS Resin. Um, KS Resin, of course I'll have my link for them down in the description. They are amazing. I found there to be a lot less air bubbles in my epoxy because that can happen. You'll have these little bubbles all over your tumbler. Um, I find that it hardens a lot faster, it cures a lot faster, and I feel like it just works better for me. Now I've tried three or four different brands of epoxy before I figured out which one I liked and everybody is different. I'm not saying that the products that I use are just the best out there, just in my opinion they are the best for me. Now while you use that epoxy you definitely want to wear gloves. I have these gloves right here. I found this box of 200 gloves at Sam's Club. Now I know right now in the pandemic I think gloves are a little bit harder to find so if you have to go to a different type of glove, I actually ran out of them a couple days ago but I got on Amazon and there was a box of 500 of these gloves and they're like the plastic kinds that like hairdressers use um, and I mean they worked too, they just weren't like as tight on my hand as I like them to be. So mainly I use them for like spray paint or like mixing up my epoxy. And then I would switch to the latex gloves whenever I would actually apply my epoxy. Do not want your epoxy to touch your skin. Um, even if, like me, I have not had an allergic reaction, you know, I've accidentally gotten some on my skin, um, but I immediately wash it off and I haven't had a reaction to it or anything. But it's really best if you wear gloves while you apply your epoxy to your tumbler. And like I mentioned, epoxy has a part A and a part B. These two parts mix together and you want them to be a one-to-one -one ratio. And you will mix them together. And to do that, I use my popsicle sticks that I get either from Amazon or my local Dollar General. And then a lot of people like to use medicine cups with like the little numbers on the sides to make sure that they get like an exact even amount. Um, I did that when I first started, but now I just get like the plastic cups from Dollar General and I, you know, get down at the level of the, t of the cups and I just eyeball it and that's how I mix it. I'm sure a lot of people probably don't agree with that, but that's just personally what I do. And now moving on, because I could talk about epoxy forever, um, but moving on, next thing obviously you'll need is a tumbler turner. If you're just starting out, you can buy the little singles from Amazon for like 25 bucks, or you can go to the bigger companies like Cuposaurus, um, Bama Cup Turners, um, the Bowen, there's a lot of different brands of cup turners out there and right now the one that people ask about a lot that I have back here, I cannot tell you where I got that. It was a gift from my mom when I first started all of this and the box literally just said cup turner. Like there was no website, there was no business name, it just said cup turner. So I don't even think she knows where she got it. Um, but they are four cup turners and I have two of them so I have eight total and I have a six cup turner coming in from Bama Cup Turners and I'm super super excited about it. I'll make sure to do a review when I get that here. And the tumbler turner is necessary so whenever you're applying your epoxy it constantly slowly spins your tumbler so that epoxy can self level and get itself completely around your tumbler. And now for the more decorative side of all of this, um, I think spray paint is very necessary. I always spray paint my tumblers. 
like this one um, I spray painted it to prep it for a water slide this is a cup for um, my friend's son it's gonna be um, the Hulk tumbler so it's gonna look really cool in the end but like when I made this one I spray painted it white and then I applied all of my glitter and I also feel like you really need to buy as many colors as you possibly can um, mainly get white because you know white it can be used on anything but like for example for this tumbler I put a more burgundy colored paint up here and a gold paint down here because when I applied my glitter it's a lot easier to have that base coat that matches my glitter color so I won't have to add like three layers of glitter to cover up the white paint underneath if there are any gaps in my glitter and speaking of glitter I get all of my glitter from the glitter grind and I will like always have my link for them down in my description and that's another thing that's going to be totally up to you. I've tried a few different glitter companies. I've even gotten some glitter from Walmart when I first started when I just wanted to do like my practice tumblers. Um, but when I got more into my business and more um, into making my tumblers, I tried a lot of different companies and my favorite by far has been the Glitter Grind. I feel like for one their shipping is like real quick and the quality of their glitter is my favorite as well. So it's very very pigmented. For them it's like a little goes a long way. And they have a lot more stuff there too. They don't have just glitter. They've got silicone molds, mica powders, um, tools that you need like like exacto knives and tack it and just all kinds of different stuff there. So definitely go check them out. I have my link for them down in the description. And then for your more advanced designs, um, there are items like mica powders and alcohol inks that you can mix into your epoxy um, to give different looks. I'm sure like uh, let me see this one right here I made these with um, mica powders and a little bit of glitter and my Lisa Frank tumbler here I used alcohol inks to make this look and when you are applying your glitters I like to use Mod Podge that's just a personal preference for myself a lot of people like to put epoxy on their tumblers first and use that as their um, way to get the glitters to stick to the cup I just like to use Mod Podge I don't like to mess with epoxy any more than I already have to um, just because I, I hate mixing it up so I just like to use my Mod Podge you can also use um, spray glue I know Mod Podge has a spray glue and then once the glitter is on the tumbler and whatever you used to put it on the tumbler is dry you're going to want to take some sealant and then you can get the sealant in the same brand that you got your spray paint um, like I get all of my spray paint from Rust-Oleum I either get it from Amazon or Walmart or um, just wherever I'm at that has the spray paint at the time and I use Rust-Oleum clear sealant as well and whenever my Mod Podge is dry underneath of all that glitter which takes about five minutes um, I give it a good spray of the Rust-Oleum clear sealant and that's just going to help the glitter stay put so whenever I'm smearing my epoxy all over the tumbler it doesn't move and mess up my design now if you are just starting out this is absolutely not necessary but if you're wanting to put some decals on your tumblers or some images or whatever you're going to need a Cricut or a Silhouette. Um, I've heard really good reviews about the Silhouette. I have a Cricut Explore Air 2. Um, they are a little pricey but I got mine from QVC and I made monthly payments on it. So because I didn't have like the $300 or whatever it was at the time to get the Cricut Explore Air 2 outright. So I paid monthly on it. Um, you know, as soon as I ordered it, it shipped. I didn't have to pay it off first. But so you're needed Cricut. And you if you have a Cricut, you want to download the Cricut Design app on your phone or your computer or whatever you use. I use my phone. And um, that's where you make all of your designs and that's how you connect your design to your Cricut to be cut out. And what goes into the Cricut to make your designs is vinyl. If you are, you know, making your decals for your tumblers, you want to use permanent vinyl. My favorite brand has been Oracle 651. Um, you can find it on Amazon or you can go to oracle651.com and find it there. I usually get mine by the roll on Amazon. Um, I don't use vinyl a lot, but when I do it's mainly black or white and so I buy them by the six or ten feet rolls I can find on Amazon and I'll make sure to have links down there for that too. Now for the more detailed and advanced images on your tumblers um, you will need water slide paper. Water slide paper you can find on Amazon and I use Hayes water slide paper that has been my absolute favorite to work with. It's really easy to work with it doesn't crack it doesn't split um, but like for example 
this one I haven't finished yet but like that is a water slide image it's a full collar detailed image my back and body hurts decal that is a water slide image and my beach tumbler this was vinyl so see what I mean the difference this is just um, nothing too detailed just some words and like some outlines of starfish and stuff and then something like this is much more detailed so vinyl water slide image and then to print your water slide images you're going to need a printer so I know I'm throwing a lot of stuff at you but I promise I promise I promise it will all come together and the more you sit down and learn about it and the more YouTube videos that you watch and the more you practice it's going to be it's not going to seem like that much so for the printer you don't need anything super fancy mine is an Epson expression home uh, XP 330 so it's a pretty big and bulky printer um, it's pretty old I'm pretty sure they made like a slimmer version of this one at Walmart and it's like 60 bucks so you don't need anything super crazy you don't need a special kind of printer to print your water site images and another item that I have here in my shed is my heat gun this is my Wagner heat gun I got it from Amazon and I use my heat gun after I apply my epoxy to my tumblers and all that's going to do is kind of pop those air bubbles that might have gotten into my epoxy so I don't have little bubbles all over my tumbler. And you can also use a heat gun whenever you apply mica powders or alcohol inks to your tumbler to kind of help them move around and blend them. A couple more items I have in here that I use daily is my pure acetone or my 91% rubbing alcohol. This is from Family Dollar and this is from Amazon. And acetone is going to remove paint so like I don't know if you can really see but whenever I like you can see it pretty good right here so whenever I base coated this tumbler white with my rust-oleum spray paint I got some in the rim here and so you don't want to leave that in the rim and have it looking all yucky when you give it to your customer so you can take some pure acetone and a cotton ball which I also got these from Amazon and that is going to remove that paint super super easy so it's not all over the inside of the tumbler a couple more basic items that I have here in my shed are my sanding blocks, which is for whenever you put your glitter on your tumbler after that first coat of epoxy. It's probably going to be a little rough in spots, so I use my sanding block to just very gently sand all around the tumbler before I put on the second coat of epoxy so I don't have bumps and lumps everywhere. I also have this measuring tape. Um, I use this to measure the size of my decals that I want. So like for this one, I just picked a spot on the tumbler and I wanted it to be about three and a half inches tall. That's what it looked good for me and that's what I use my measuring tape for. And the last thing I'm going to talk about, I promise this is the last thing, I know it's a lot, um, but I have two different heaters here in my shed. I do have a metal shed even though it's insulated. Um, it's very, very cold where I live and just from where it's metal I think that's what makes it worse so it does get kind of cold in here and I have my two little heaters running and you want to keep your area or your room or your building or whatever about I keep mine I have it on 75 so I have it about 75 degrees in here and that keeps it nice and warm so for one my epoxy on my tumblers is going to cure properly um, my spray paint is going to stay at a good temperature so it doesn't get all clogged and clumpy and weird um, my acrylic paints and my alcohol inks and everything is going to be nice and warm so everything can work properly so I know I just threw a lot of information at you but this is everything that I have in my shed that I use if anybody that has also been doing tumblers for a while knows of any other items that I missed or maybe I forgot about definitely feel free to put them in the comments so um, all of our beginner friends out there can learn about everything that they need to start their own tumbler business and if you're new here I have been ending my videos with a positive quote just to give everybody kind of a uplifting quote for the day and I call it my cup of positivity so my cup of positivity for you all today is believe you can and you're halfway there and that was said by Theodore Roosevelt so that's enough out of my mouth today I know I threw a lot of information at you guys and if you guys have any questions like always please feel free to comment and don't forget to subscribe thanks guys bye